Yeah. What's going on, everybody? It's yours, True to the Ace, back with another Behind the Teens video, episode 14. And we are talking about the Minnesota Vikings. I got my boy Jared in the building. How you doing, hey, my guy? What's going on, brother? What's going on? Man, just glad to have you on, man. Appreciate you. We ran into each other the other day, and I was like, yo, we were talking about it. My man said he's a Vikings yeah. fan, so I was like, I got to get him on. And we've, we've talked a lot of shit about sports to each other on uh, Facebook, whether it's LeBron, <laughs> everything, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I got to get my mans on here, man. Thank you for coming on, first and foremost. Yeah. For sure, bro. You know, it's always a pleasure, man. You know, linking up with uh, you know high school, old high school buddies, man. You know, be, be more than happy to do it, man. What's going on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so let's get right into it. So For Minnesota sure. Vikings last year, 13 and four division yeah. winners of the <laughs> NFC North, but then they ran into a buzzsaw in my New York Giants. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have beaten us, y'all have beaten us a couple <laughs> weeks before. And uh, that's why I got a smile on my face. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so we, we took y'all out when it mattered the most. And uh, I, got a, I got a smile too because it's unbelievable. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, it was very believable for us, man. I was I was happy as hell. So, but look, man, outside of that, I just need your overall. What do you think about the 2022 season overall? Okay. Um. So I'm gonna start off like this. Uh, you can quote me on this. It's been a couple years since we actually won a division. You know, Green Bay has always been, you know, at the helm. Um, I want to say our last division win was maybe 2017. We went to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Um, that year Aaron Rodgers got hurt. So this was a this was a year, um, I believe for us to really um, you know, to show our stride. And I really feel like last year was one of the better years to do it. Our defense was just not up to par, man. Um, I think we gave up some of the most points in the league last year um on defense. Uh that Donna Shell shit was horrible. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, we, we had one, we had a we had a we had a coordinator that was proven, but at the same time, uh he, he came under the coaching tree of uh of which a guy that was at Denver, um, the defensive coordinator. Uh gosh almighty, I can't think of the guy's name. Older gentleman though, but he comes under that coaching tree. But but uh mm -hmm. from like a one to ten, I feel like we had about an eight. Um like I said, I, I feel like if, if it was any season to make some noise besides like 2007 and 2009, I feel like last year was the year to do it. It was just we had a lot of missing holes um, Yeah, for last year. Yeah. And then, like I said, you guys just couldn't, you know, just couldn't get it done against the Giants. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, 13 wins. <laughs> 13, nah, I'm saying no. I'm not, I'm not even talking shit. I'm not trying, trying to shit. I'm trying to say like 13 wins is nothing to sneeze at. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you guys – had i think you guys had a really good year you know what i'm saying overall right. and uh stuff but like see, that but see a lot of that we got lucky too i didn't mean to cut you off um no, you we, got, we got lucky with a lot of those games man and um it kind of it kind of bit us in the butt because what what was what was our struggle against teams all year mm -hmm. is kind of like how we're made offensively like if you have a, a, a decent run game which of course because you had one of the best running backs in the league, still one of the best running backs in the league. One of the best that was our, in the league. Yeah, yeah, that and that was that was that was one of our formulas to win. You know, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, we rely off play action in the run game. That's the same way we lost to you all. You know, uh, Daniel Jones uh, playing well with the play action, playing off the back of Saquon, and and we just it, we just didn't have enough uh, defensive like uh, prowess to um, yeah. you know to to really make. To really make an effective, you know, uh, an, an effective stint, excuse me, on, on defense. That was, that was our biggest issue um, last year. So Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's just, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. But Kirk Cousins, too, man, like, you know, he's got to be – there's the there's the shadow of, you know, first Cousins can't play in it. prime time. And I, I get you know, it. I get spotlights it. is bright, you know what I'm saying? But – He's got himself some weapons this year. I mean, obviously, you know, y'all missing Dalvin Cook. Let's let's go ahead and get into the offseason, right? All okay. right, so what going into this offseason, what do you feel like was the Vikings' biggest need, and did they address it via the draft and via free agency? Because me personally, I actually like the draft that you guys had. I do, too. I do, too. Mm -hmm. um, along with the draft, I like some of the uh, preseason um you know, things we had to negotiate with our roster, man, we got to pay a lot of people. See, that's, that's what people forget as being fans, you know, when you don't, you don't, you know, really uh, articulate your, you know, the business side of it because we're so, you know, fanned out. We're fanatics. That, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, even past the fans, you know, me being a sports player, me being a sports guy, you know, you kind of get away from 
just being a fan and you start looking at, you know, a team as an organization, you know what I'm saying? So it's a business uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure. But even past a business, even if it wasn't a business, you know, um, people would still be getting paid for it. Well, mm-hmm. that would make it a business anyway, because it's still professional. But at the same time, people got to understand it's like there's windows the teams have. And and a lot of things we were like, man, that's dumb. But so a uh, Dalvin Cook situation. Uh, I loved it and I hated it. You know what I'm saying? Dalvin Cook was, you know, we drafted him here. I thought he was going to be, a, you know, thought, I thought he was going to end his career with us. But, you know, the money. And people got to understand, you know, we're not in a in a in a era right now in football where the running back is considered your you know your biggest chess piece. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, trust me, I, I know with Saquon Barkley, I know right. we're in the same boat. You know? Right. And then and then with that though, you got to see the usage of uh, of your running back. I, I feel like it's certain things that allotted Saquon to stay where he is because your formula is conducive to a lot of things Saquon does, especially yeah. when you're not having you know, top tier receivers, Danny, Daniel Jones, you know, still still being the, one of the younger quarterbacks in the game, Um, even though he's been around for a while. It's been like, what is it like? It's going to be his fourth year this year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so it's a, it's a lot of things that you need to kind of like, uh, you know, keep keep that keep that energy on um, high, you know, on the offensive side, because without Saquon, your offense could get pretty stagnant. So it's, yeah, it's, level, it's levels to, you know, to offensive um, longevity when it comes to certain teams. But, uh, yeah, addressing, addressing our draft, I feel like uh, we, we got pieces we needed to. Um, I wish me personally we would have drafted um, a quarterback a little higher. Um, my, my position with that is it's always a toss-up because you never know with quarterbacks how good they're going to be, even though that's the one of the most important pieces to win in a Super Bowl. So yeah. um everybody rags on everybody rags on Kirk Cousins, man. But um I, I feel like uh sometimes it's like when we talk about checkers, not chess, he's he's not your ideal top 10 quarterback, but he does a lot of things that a lot of people can't do if you get that man a clean pocket. So yeah, um, yeah I'm not bad. I'm not mad, yeah, I'm not mad at the extension. Um I do think at the end of the day that's gonna be our most important tool going forward. We've never really had uh, a quote unquote franchise quarterback besides him, Dante Culpepper, and my boy from the nineties. Um and he, he I always remember him, but then I lose my um, you know, lose my train of thought. I think it's Tommy Kramer. Tommy Kramer, that's when I first started liking the uh, Vikings, like it was that like mid eighties, early nineties. I mean of course I wasn't born in the eighties, but you know I'm I'm a fan. So I, you know I went back and research. And then before him of course, was Fran Tarkenton. So he was yeah. he was really the big deal, you know, as far as Vikings quarterback. He was one of those like Roger Starback guys. He's one of those guys that really, you know, excited the game. But yeah. addressing our draft, draft issues, I, I feel like we did a good job. It, it's it, it's a constant work, man, with your football team, man. Especially, you know, like, you know, you've always been on the cusp of winning. Us never um, having a Super Bowl. And here's a fun fact. We're the most winning team in football history to never have a Super Bowl. Are you? So that, yeah. So that should mm-hmm. that should tell you, you know, the stuff, the type of stuff that we've had to like deal with, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, through, through the history of a franchise, man. But like I said, yeah. I wouldn't share a Viking fan for a world, bro. Well, know? also in our lifetime, you know, you guys have had some tough Green Bay Packer teams, some tough Bears teams as well. You know what I'm saying? So your division historically has been pretty good. Um, I want to touch base on something that you that you had said that made a good point. Um, as far as winning, like you have to kind of See, this is the era of football where, like you said, running back is more of a luxury. You know what I'm saying? If you have one, good, but it's not it's not a necessity. We're in an era where, you know, Daniel Jones, you you know, you asked me about um, how long he's been in the league. He's played four years going on five. Right. The the difference between our type of teams and like the good teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, you have to win why quarterbacks are on their rookie contracts because they get expensive. For and sure. then, like with Patrick Mahomes, he was winning on his rookie contract, and For then sure. you can give him an extension that's very team friendly down the line. For but sure. you know, we're kind of in that situation with Kirk Cousins, where he got paid, and he's getting paid a lot of money, so the expectations sure. are going to be there because he is one of your highest contracts. You know what I'm so it's like, yeah, so it's like you know, you gotta, you need that. It would have been a good window for you guys to kind of like the quarterbacks were very top heavy this draft, so you weren't going to get yourself one of those unless you gave up a lot like Carolina did. But like right. I said, I like what you guys did because we were in the same boat as you guys. We were looking for receiver and cornerback. 
you guys look when you guys were ahead of us you took jordan addison i was like mother fuck. i want the deontay yeah. banks i look when I, going into the draft i said i want one or two players either jordan yeah. addison or deontay banks so i was good with what we got either way but when right. y'all got jordan addison i was like fuck, y'all got one like right, because sure. that boy is nice i said this and i've been i'm putting this on the record for Jordan sure. Addison reminds me of Devontae Adams because Ooh. he's not the fastest. He, yeah. He's got good release. He's got good route running. He's got great hands. He made a hell of a catch in uh, the first preseason game. Yeah, that even, though, yeah. <laughs> even, though they, even though they didn't challenge it and it was incomplete, right. they went back right. with the replay. It should have been complete. Right. And I was right. like, yo, this kid is nice. And then right. pretty much y'all invested your next three picks in defense, which is like right. what you guys need, you know? For sure. Uh, and I look at I look at it both ways that you do, man. Um, one thing about the Vikings, man, we've never had a problem in the receiver room. <laughs> so that's that's, that's been true. that's been that's been historically, you know, what we've you know been known for, you know, especially in the '90s to now, you know, from the Chris Carters, you know, even to our tight end play, Randy Moss, of course, you know, mm-hmm. following up with Jordan, um, following up with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. Ad, Adam, Thiel, I was about to say, Adam Thielen was a yeah, good cornerstone for you guys. Too. He was reliable. Of course, is the um by by the by the end by the end of his career is is no reason why he shouldn't be um inducted into our uh, ring of fame uh mm-hmm. with, the, with the Vikings. So I really yeah. feel like he has a strong chance of doing that, man. So yeah, but you guys got yourself a tandem with Justin yeah. Jefferson, who is I would say. Justin is number two. I'm going to say Devontae is still the best receiver in the league, but That's Justin fair. is a close two, only because Devontae has you know, done it over a longer period of time, but Justin okay. Jefferson has arrived. Uh, Addison is a good pickup. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Dalvin Cook, if you guys could have brought him back, would have been good, but, you know, yeah. that sucks. Too expensive, man. Like I said, we we have a lot of – we got a lot of people we got to pay. We got to pay Daniel Hunter. He just signed a deal. He signed a one-year deal, one year that was kind of friendly – but after this year, he's really going to want, you know, a long-term contract. So if he stays healthy, we're going to have to pay him. Justin Jefferson's up next. So we we got a lot of we got a lot of money things, man. So so it was a necessary evil. Um, hated to see him go, but you know that's a, like you say, as a part of the business. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So all right. So next question I got to ask for you is who's going who needs to be your standout player going into the 23, 2023 season for the Vikings to get back to the playoffs and you know, 13 wins and win the North and stuff like that. Who you, who you think? My my political rec, uh, my political correct answer would of course be um Kirk Cousins. Um, of course, mm-hmm. we already know. You know, I mean, we already know what Justin Jefferson's going to do. We already know we, we can have a running back by committee. But we have a guy by a lot of people don't really know Alexander Madison. He could tilt the rock too. Um, but I that's my political correct answer. My mm-hmm. my real and all true out answer would be uh better. Better commitment from the defense, man. I'm like, like as a whole, not even just one player. Like uh pass rush has never been the issue. Um as you know, uh we got Brian Flores from Miami, um, you know, as our defensive coordinator. Um, he came in uh this this preseason. So I felt like that'll uh make our you know, make our defense a little more energetic, um, a little more dynamic. Uh, when it comes to getting to the quarterback and um and making sure we we're not giving up twenty yard plays, man. That, that's that's the biggest thing in the NFL, man. If you can limit if you can limit 15, 20 yard plays, man, you can keep yourself in the game. And and even if you even if you saw some of our games last year, like most of our games were won because actually Kirk Cousins did what he was supposed to do in that damn pocket. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people a lot of people talk about him, but half of those wins we don't have if we don't get the ball last and Kirk Cousins does his thing. So, yeah. you know, a, a lot of people, you know, like I said, I'm not I'm not a great, you know, a super Kirk stand or whatever the fake may be. But at the end of the day, when you understand football and you know football, you know, he saved our ass a lot of those times, especially when our defense was playing as piss poor as we are. So yeah. my answer, I gave you two. <laughs> I gave you two answers. So I, I really I really feel like politically correct is always going to be Kirk Cousins because we're at the era where, yeah. you know, the quarterbacks make or break you. But the defense has to play a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, And that's what it comes down to. Like, you made a good point as far as the the big yards and stuff like that. Realistically, the way you win football games is limiting the big plays, letting them yeah. settle for field goals, you score yes. touchdowns, yes. a bend but not a break them, type bro. defense. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. A bend but not break type defense. But there's two guys I think that need to be your standout player. One on defense, Daniil Hunter. 
know what I'm saying? It kind of needs a, you know, a big year because you guys were getting shredded on the run. You know what I'm saying? Like to us, imagine what you would have done if you'd have faced Philly. You know what I'm oh, saying? Like he needs to step up could... and yeah. You know, we played him last year and it was bad. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, so the defense, and I'm gonna tell you this, Jordan Addison, man. I expect to, look, I, I like the kid. And realistically, if he even emerges, it takes because everybody's gonna be on Justin Jefferson. Imagine that other side of the field. If you gotta right. start rotating guys to him, then it opens up stuff for Justin Jefferson as well. I, I agree. And I'm gonna tell you another sleeper, man, because a lot of people don't know about him. And um I'm I'm losing I, I hate when I do this because I've been talking about him all week and now it's my my mind's drawing a blank because we're on the uh, we're on the show. Yeah. And, uh, as our slot receiver, um, guy with the oh, Osborne, yes, KJ, KJ. Mm-hmm. yes, like, like people don't know, like, he can get it done. So, like, even, even if, even if Jordan does his thing, I'm telling you, either one of them two in the slot, if, even if you put Jordan on the outside and you put KJ in the slot and he has the year I think he's gonna have, it's gonna be a lot more problems than what people think. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you. I'm, Kurt, I'm Kurt, outside of the running backs, he's definitely got the weapons. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's definitely got the weapons to throw it, throw that thing up. And then, um, like we said, with last year, you know, you guys were criticized on that last play against the Giants where not – why didn't he – it's the decision-making that Kirk Cousins has to make better. Like, sometimes okay. you have a receiver like like uh, Justin Jefferson, you got to throw that shit up. And I got just you. trust that he's going to be there. Like, with that long play that you guys had, it was like fourth and like 17, I want to say. No, it's fourth. Yeah. Oh, you talking about with the Bills? Or yeah, the yeah, Bills? yeah, the one oh, that he yeah, came yeah. down one-handed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. So, so here's my thing, man, and this that's why I tell you all the time because it's like it's like you're probing the, the great question. You're bringing up some things that really made me cry at night. But uh, that 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 game against you all, I really feel like honestly and truly, you got to look at it both ways. If you look at that last play of the game, I don't care what check down he threw to, the dude had like two seconds to throw the freaking ball. Oh, so yeah. it was it was more so if he didn't want to get sacked. Like if you if, and I get what you're saying, throw the ball, but it's just like okay, throw the ball up, right? And that's a pick, and everybody's talking shit about him. Oh, look at me throwing an interception at the last play of the game. Like, yeah. it, 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 like you never, you never win, and and that's another thing. Um, with our, our our offensive line, where people don't understand, they were the bottom of the league. So it's a lot. That's so when you ask me what do we need to address, it's a plethora of things, man. But yeah, you know, if you if you give them a if you give them a decent line, um, I'm not even asking our lines to be like the Cowboys or you know these top guys. Yeah, you know, um, I'm not even asking us to be like that because some of that, you know, those group of guys stay with each other for years. They, you know, they they've been in trial and error. That's another thing. We've never been a super terrible team. So a lot of these <laughs> picks we're just getting are middle pack, you know, picks because we've never been a you know three and eleven or you know, three and 14. Yeah. You, just, you guys you just, are kind of in purgatory where you guys, you know, we've been there. You guys are in purgatory where you're not bad enough to be bad, but you're not good enough to be good either. Which is the worst place to freaking be, honestly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like being a Vikings fan, that's what we, you know, that's what I'm used to seeing my whole life. So, but I still love yeah. it. I'm traded for the exactly. world. <laughs> exactly. All right. So realistic expectations for the 2023 season. What do you think needs to happen? Shit, the thing we've been talking about for the past 20 minutes, bro. Every everything has to be collective. Like, I don't I don't expect Kurt to to down spiral. One thing about Kurt, he's never a terrible quarterback. You know, he just like you said, his decision making is shaky. Uh the biggest thing for us to have a, a a great season would definitely be on the defensive side of the ball. Like I can't stress that enough. Um, if we limit, you know, seven to nine points that we were giving up last year, that'll put us right at the league average. Like, I think we gave up like freaking damn near 31 points last year per game. Like it was something like it was something like terrible like that. It was really it was really bad. Like, I don't I don't know if it was in the 30s, but it was it was definitely mid 20s. And any time a team of any caliber can score mid 20s to 30 points on you, that's an issue. And that's always going to be a problem. Um, but realistically, I, I say about we, we have 17 games. Realistically, what I would hope to see is around 10 and 7, 11 and 6. Realistically, um, because mm-hmm. like I said, you don't we don't know what we don't know yet. So, all I all I can see is that you know, certain things that propel us, especially we have one of the toughest fucking schedules in the in the league, too. So, yeah, as a matter of fact, that's a good you 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 reminded me because normally yeah. I bring up the strength of schedule journeys and uh. Right. Yeah. Well, so do your thing, man. Do your thing, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm about to bring it up right now. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Um, the strength of schedule for y'all this year is 
18. So y'all are in the middle of the pack. Yeah, you know but we got, some heavy, we got some heavy. We got some heavy hitters on that man. I don't know. I don't know where they got that graded scale from. But we'll we'll go with it. Cause yeah, my well, my thing is too. I, let me tell you this: your division, Green Bay, may have taken a. It's probably going to take a huge step back, which is to be expected. You know, so you because right. we do not know what we're going to get from Jordan Love at all. That's but true. the but Lions scary, and the too. Bears, but the exactly. Lions and the Bears are on the upcoming. I had a Bears fan on here. Look, I say this all the time. Only because you know Giants were looking at him too. I'm a big fan of Ryan Poles and what he's doing over there in Chicago. I, like, I agree. He I is agree. a good GM and he's got a lot of money to work with. He's got I a young agree. quarterback. I think the Bears take a leap forward. I think it's about in the three years before they're competitive and back in the playoffs. The Lions showed a lot last year. Obviously, a lot of their players are going to be suspended to start off. So maybe they fall back behind. But yeah, it's going to be a tough division for you guys this year. For sure, for sure, and, and like I said, even if like it's gonna be tough for us, but from the outside looking in, a lot of people are gonna look at that probably like one of the you know one of the bottom divisions you know in the NFL right now. Of course, of course, of course, on the NFC side, it's definitely the NFC South because you don't know what you don't know with any. Oh, of they're them. they're the worst division in the league. Yeah, yeah. The, only, the only constant they have is you know in New Orleans with uh, with your boy Derek Carr, and um, everything else is pretty much up in the air with that division. So between yeah. those two. You know that's that's you know that's the that's that's the look we're getting right now is being one mm-hmm. of the bottom divisions, which is not a problem as long as we win it. I could give a damn less, you know. So <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the schedule. I need your need need you to tell me what you think is going to be wins and losses out here. All right, so obviously you know preseason had already started. Y'all took an L against um, the. Uh, Seahawks, but that's just preseason. As long as everybody gets out of there healthy, that's all anybody really cares about. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, all right, first week, y'all starting off in a tough spot at Seattle. I thought I thought our first game of the year was uh Tampa Bay. No, 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 no. no. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah, yeah, I did my part. Yeah. I was looking at preseason. Yeah, I'm in preseason. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, at yeah. Thanks for correcting me. You got me. no problem. You. No problem. So y'all man. at Tampa Bay. You're right. You at Tampa Bay. Yeah, Tampa Bay. That's a, that's a win. Yeah, like a win. Of every crowd there is a win. Uh they you know they question the quarterback position. Um what I'm when I'm hearing though it's a hot take, man. Trey Lance might be a buccaneer um before the season starts, man. Yeah, they're talking about him, you know, saying because Baker Mayfield sucks. Yeah, and no nobody I don't believe him. So exactly. So <laughs> yeah. all right, week two L. At Philly. Yeah, you just giving yeah. that an L, no chance at all. Yeah. No, no chance at all. And I'm gonna tell you why. Um I'm gonna just stop for like two, three seconds and talk. Um it, we're, we're not we're not physical enough. Their 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 offensive line are still bullies. Um, you know, only the only the only chance I see is if Daniel gets off to a good start and really starts to bother Jalen Hurts. But if that if, if that doesn't happen, that, that's a loss for sure. And yeah, we're playing at least, Philly's at fucking, least. Man, Philly's tough, man. Philly's Philly's yeah. tough, especially in Philadelphia. That that's you never and on Thursday night football too. Yeah, you never want to play there. Ooh, but see, I, I want to get away. I really want to get away from y'all. Go stop doing my man Kurt like that. I really want to get away from that stigma, man. For, a football game is a football game to me, bro. Oh like, no, no, no. I'm more or less talking about how it's a short week, so you okay. have a lot of time to prepare. Yeah, and I, I'm not I, talking I, about I, the prime time, Kurt. Because okay. yeah, that, that goes without saying. No, no. But <laughs> I'm saying though, they do me all. At least you get your Thursday night game out early, though. You know what I'm saying? Out right. of the way early. Right. Right. So okay, because right, like. Right. You're Facing Philly, you got three days to prepare. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but at the time, too, you never know. Because they don't have as much time to prepare either. You might get them. You never know. Man. Next uh, next team. <laughs> <laughs> then, you, then you guys are at home versus uh, the Chargers. Who you got? That, that's a toss-up, man. But because we're at home, it's going to be our first home game of the season. Uh, you know, you don't, I don't know if you've ever been to uh, Bank of it's America. Gonna be your, it'll be your second home game of the season. You guys open at home on Tampa. Oh, I thought we were in Tampa Bay. Okay, I thought we were in Tampa Bay. So yeah, so second game of the season. Um, is that a Sunday? Sunday. Yep. The Chargers game on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm going to go ahead and chart it up as a win. Um, I love I love Justin. Um, I, I love I love his quarterback and skills, but he you know, like still has too. a lot to learn. Yeah, he still has a lot to learn though. Um, especially you know collectively, you know finishing the game out all four phases playing one through four quarters, not just having a stellar third quarter. Like, you know, he has to, he has to start getting to that point where, cause, cause people are really looking at him to be elite. So he has to start showing his elite status. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give us that win. in uh, yeah, in, yeah. In, it, I mean, in he's, all, and he's also got the former Cowboy coordinator, Kellen Moore this year. So I'm excited to see what Kellen Moore can do with the real quarterback. Unlike sure. who, who he's had Dak the whole time. So now he's got himself a real quarterback. 
For, for sure. For sure. So then week four at Carolina, what you got? Uh, we're going to win that one too. Okay. Yeah. yeah rookie, uh, rookie, uh, Bryce Young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. You guys will be, yeah. you know, then Kansas City, heavy hitters continue. You got both the people in the Super Bowl. For, for sure, man. Like I said, I don't I don't want to be these guys that, you know, every tough game I see on the schedules be like, no, nah, we're gonna lose. But um, but I, I think I think this and this is funny. I think the Chiefs game is more winnable than Philly. Cause uh, you know, you, you still gotta deal with um Patrick Mahomes, of course, but their defense is not as daunting as uh, you know, as as Phillies. So I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and go against the grain, man. I know what everybody else is gonna say. I'm I'm gonna be a homer, man. I'm gonna Don't go do it. Minnesota Vikings, man. You go with a W. You go with a W, baby. It's gonna be you. You trusting Kirk Cousins in the shootout? Yeah, he's That's done it before. It's be. All right, he's, we'll he's done it before. You know what I'm, I'm saying? A, all right, well, after in week five, I'll be tagging you in this. I'm, I, a, hey, look, I'm not mad. Sometimes you gotta be a homer, man. Sometimes yeah, you gotta be a homer. This. I'm clipping you know? this. I'm really right, then All right, but if we gonna go this route. I'm going to say y'all lose to the Bears coming off the hype of the Kansas City because you know that's yeah. what happens. And that's exactly what I was going to say. That's that's what's, that's what's crazy. I was going to say that. I was like, you lose to the Bears in a tough win because of all that. Justin Field goes bananas. He probably throws like 275, rushes for like 85, 100 yards, one rushing touchdown. And it's at so, Chicago too. Yeah, so, you know. All right, so San Francisco, week seven. Who you got? San Fran. Whew. Um... Where is it at? Is it San Fran or is it in, in Minnesota? It's in Minnesota. Minnesota. I got to night football. <laughs> I got to ha, 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 ha. I got us dropping two in a row, man. I got us okay. losing to the Bears and losing to San Fran. Um, two nail biters. They could be no more than seven point games each. Okay. So you that know. put you as, at four and three to start. Okay, then Green four, Bay four at Green three. Bay. We will take that five and three. We'll be five and three. Yeah. We we we, we kind of lost the stigma of like you know losing in Air, I mean not Arrowhead but uh um in Lambo Field I, th- I think we pretty much got Lambo now. Yeah, y'all sweeping them. Y'all yeah. sweeping them this year. Yeah. yeah. Then you're going at Atlanta. I can see y'all taking this. Easy. Atlanta, yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a de- those last two games, man. I just don't I don't believe in uh, uh Desmond Riddler that um I don't really believe in Derek Carr. He's a great quarterback, but he doesn't he he has decent things around him, but they're still you know getting off you know of having. You know, shaky seasons. Um, he's you know learning new coordinator. Um, he has you know, of course, he has Alvin Kamara and all that good stuff. But he'll have him know. back by then. Yeah, he'll be back. Yeah, by then. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they're. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. I don't know. Yeah, I can see y'all taking both of those two wins. Yeah, and then at yeah. Denver, the only at thing Denver. is with this game is anything at mile high is tough because of the altitude, altitude. like that. It's a tough place to play. That's just that's just like NFL and basketball. Same thing. Yep. Um. So, so what I'll say to this is, is uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the nod to the Broncos that game. And the only reason why I do, because I feel like uh, this is going to be a proven year for Russell, um, which sounds insane. Because <laughs> it's Sean like, Payton. It's, it's, yeah, but I mean, I mean, Sean Payton, Sean Payton, really, nobody's really going to get mad at Sean Payton because he's kind of like a made man already. Like, yeah, Russell, but he'll, still, bring, he'll bring the best out of Russell, though. Right. And Russell, Russell's still like a Hall of Famer, but – his 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 season last year was pretty awful. So yeah, Russ needs to get back to cooking and stop meal prepping. So yeah, <laughs> so. for sure, for sure, man, for sure. So and then week twelve against the Bears, we, we'll win. It. We'll win. That that is that's in Minnesota, right? Yeah, we'll win that one. We'll yeah. That. All right. So you got yourself splitting with the Bears. Then you hit yeah. the bye week. Then you're at uh, Los Angeles, Las Vegas for the Raiders. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go ahead and take. Uh, I'm gonna take us in the uh, Raiders. I really don't believe in. Uh, what, what's your boy? What's the? What's the? Um, Jimmy Garoppolo. No, no, no. Jimmy's fine. Jimmy's a winner. I, I have no issues with Jimmy. Uh, it's 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 the uh, it's the head coach, jo- Josh McDaniels. Josh, I don't Josh McDaniels. Really, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I've never been really a fan. You know, it's it's like it's like most people they come from Belichick or not Belichick at all. Like nowhere. The tree near. sucks. Yeah, the Belichick tree <laughs> sucks. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny. Like. It's the tree funny. is strong, but the apples suck, man. But the, yeah, the man. fruit is it's producing is trash. Because, like, if you if you if you consider Brian Dable like under his you know tree, he's kind of like breaking even. But if you don't, yeah. if, if you you know what I'm saying, if you don't consider it, then you're like, yeah, your tree is pretty terrible, bro. Yeah, there's a lot of Bill <laughs> Belichick branches that have fell and yeah. just died. So, all right. Yeah. So then you know at uh, Cincinnati, they're they're gonna be tough. Yeah, it's, it's Joe Bear, of course, man. What what I will say is, and 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 it's like I'm I'm being a I'm not gonna say I'm being a homer. I'm being realistic. I, I think we take that one and we win that one only because last year you should have beat them. They caught a fucking 
terrible call on Dalvin Cook. He did not fumble that ball. So, so it's going to be a revenge game for us, man. I'm telling you. It's going to be a revenge game for us. We're going to come out tight, even though we're going to be missing Dalvin. Justin Jefferson is going to get the team, you know, ready to go, hyped up. You know, tell him how how much he pissed us off last year with that call. Mm-hmm. The refs, the refs kicked this. Then I, I think we take that one. Then y'all end the season with three division games. That's that's tough which, to see. Which, like. is, which, is, which is tough. Yep. Yeah, like, you don't see so, that too yeah. often. You don't see three division games to end the season normally like this. So, but Not first game at Detroit. What you got at the, uh, at home versus Detroit? Right. And another similar thing with uh, us beating the Chiefs. We're gonna lose that one. We're going to come off a high, beating the Bengals. We're going to think we're untouchable, unstoppable, and then we lose that. Okay. Then yeah. finish off at home, last home game versus Green Bay. We're sw- we're sweeping them. So, yeah. yeah that's I, I can agree with that. Then yeah. you at, then you end in at Detroit, which they might be fighting for a playoff spot at this point. They might be fighting for a playoff spot. They might be fighting for the division, too, with y'all. And guess, and guess what? This is where that stops and we'll be two-year division champ winners in a row. We beat okay. Detroit in Minnesota. On a tight one, of course. Dan Campbell's gonna be trying to bite kneecaps and all that bullshit, but it won't matter. <laughs> we'll yeah. win that one. We'll win that one, bro. So that'll put you at twelve and five for the season. So you know, nothing yeah. to sneeze at. But you know, right. what do you see? What do you? Well, when the playoffs come around, we'll have to see. You know, what I'm saying like I'll be bringing some. Maybe I'll bring the people back on here. You know, that's what I'm gonna do. I just thought about that just now. I'm gonna bring that's the cool. people back on here. Whoever makes the playoffs, I'm bringing them back on. But like, hey, you know. That's so. what's up. And, and without actually counting games, man, like I said, 11 and 6, 12 and 5, one of those games, uh, of course, it'd be a toss up. But, you know, you got to pick. You can't just say toss up for everything. You got to kind of pick. So of a couple of those I, I picked off emotionally because I'm a Vikings fan. Who cares? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Some yeah. of them going to happen. But realistically, I see for us around that for anywhere from 10 to 7, 11 and 6 or 12 and 5. That's that's my range for how we'll do this year. Man. Yeah, so. it's the same thing. It's the same thing with me with like my Giants. I pick games that because every year every football team has a victory that they're not supposed to get, and they have a loss that they're not supposed to get. I was last so, year was the Bills, so yeah. The, the trap yeah. games are for real too, man. This yeah. trap for games sure. are legit. For sure. So so for sure, yeah, man. you will see. Like I said, you got some heavy hitters, man. But I'm a. If, if this doesn't come to fruition, I'm I'm calling you back out. I'm gonna clip oh, this no whole problem. shit and put it out there. And hey, hey, look, one thing about it, man, you you know me, I've never been as scared of the heat, man. So you oh yeah, know, you put the smoke. Yeah, man, yeah, you feel the smoke. free. Call, so, call me out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, dog, it, it was a pleasure rapping with you a little bit about you know the upcoming football season. You know, of course, we'll schedule some again closer to when the season's over before playoffs start. Likewise. So that's that's great, man. Dope. Yeah, appreciate man. you having me. In, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. But look, man, before you get before we get out of here, is there anything you want to tell the people? What you got going on? Where can they find man, you? Anything at all? Hey, man. I just uh, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Is uh, a Jared Drain on Facebook? Uh, stretch. I think I think my Instagram name is what? I think it's Stretch. Yeah, Stretch twenty two fifty on Instagram. Um. Oh no no no! I had to change that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, J, yeah, J. Jordan Deuce Deuce on uh, Instagram. Yeah, man, uh, pretty much just working, man. I'm in the medical field, um, you know, trying to take care of little when I just had a son seven months ago. So that's just been me, man, just trying to be a pops, man. That's it. I feel you. And that's, that's, the, hey, that's the best, one of the best jobs in the world for you right there. For sure, baby. For sure. So, I mean, so but look, yeah. man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate everybody for watching this long, man. You guys are the best. Um, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe to the Ace Avenue, man. We just hit over 600 subscribers about four months in. We are on the road to 700, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah. episode 14 is in the books, man. We got we're we're almost at the halfway point, and I got a couple more people scheduled. I'm trying to get all 32 teams before the end of the season, man. But like I said, appreciate you for coming on, man. Thanks, man. Man, that's good work, man. I just want to take you, man. Keep doing it. Thank you. Keep working hard, bro. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. And to everybody out there, like I said, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. As always, guys, thank you for tuning into the Ace Avenue. I am your shooter, the Ace. Adios. Peace out.